Hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Thanks for coming back to the show. We missed you. Good to see you. All my ALN fans, what are we calling you? The Rabies? The Adam Rabies? That, nope, not that. We'll figure it out. Uh, appreciate you guys being here supporting the show. If you want to keep supporting it, of course, subscribe. Click that subscribe button in the bottom right corner and then immediately click the bell so you can get notifications when new content drops, highlights, animations, all that good stuff. Comment on the videos, share them with your friends and families and strangers, and uh, just enjoy all the, the goodies that are coming your way. All right? Great episode today. Let's get into it. Joish. Hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Dave, are you uh, are you pissed? Are you pissed off that there's too many podcasts now? I'm not pissed because I'm not watching that shit. You're not. What do you watch? Uh, this show on YouTube called Jim Can't Swim, and I watch um, Sanford and Son. Pretty much, that's it. Old uh, old reruns. Yeah. <laughs> there's not a new Sanford and Sons, is there? No, but I I have an idea of a reboot. Of course you do. Yeah, <laughs> I got I got Red Fox tied on my leg. Do you really? It's my favorite comic. Yeah, so I got Red Fox tied on my leg, dog. Red Fox, I, I can't remember when I got introduced to him. It might have been through uh, some sort of like, you know, comedy documentary. And I was like, holy shit. There's certain guy That's incredible. Yeah. There's certain guys that you look back and you go, I wish I was around for the heyday of that guy. Yes. And um, I say the two most influential comedians on me would be Red Fox and Patrice. Wow. Um, uh, because Red Fox, you can watch material that he did like 40 years ago and it's still funny and relevant now that like that's how i kind of write my jokes so it's like my grandkids will be able to understand and laugh at my jokes oh so you want you don't want your jokes to have a shelf life no do you write topical stuff topical uh, for your life right? sometimes yeah. when it's just obvious and you have to address it right yeah uh that's interesting because that was one of my questions you've been doing stand-up how long now i just turned 30 uh, I did my first stand-up set when I was uh, like See, that's some cool black guy shit. Just one quote. White guys are like, set. <laughs> I did my first stand-up set when I was like 16. Holy shit. I was, uh, we had a substitute teacher, and uh, she was like, what are you going to, what are you going to do, Mr. Cool Guy? Because I was like, By the way, that's cool. a lot of flex from a sub yeah. who's not around consistently being like, fuck you. What are you going to do? Right. She, and I said, I'm going to the NFL. I said, I'm going to the NFL. And she said, well, what happens if you don't go to the NFL? I said, I'm going to the NFL. And she's like, no. What if you get hurt? What if you get this? And I said, well, I guess I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. She said, okay, come in front of the class and make us laugh. Right then and there? Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. What'd you come with? Some stupid shit. I was, <laughs> of bad. I was bad, bro. I was Obviously. Bad. I was bad. <laughs> but I bet you weren't, because it was something you were already thinking of maybe doing, I'm sure you weren't as bad as somebody who was like, if they got truly, because you went up there, did you have any sort of hesit- hesitancy or did she? No, because I was a class clown. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, so, so you were already comfortable in trying to do that. Very comfortable in front of my peers. What sort of class clown shit would you do? Oh, bro, whatever, dog. I have whoopee cushions. <laughs> Dude, I just yeah. was saying that. <laughs> I have whoopee cushions, um, roasting everybody. So you've been roasting for from the get-go. Oh, my God. Since, bro, I, the joke at... The joke at my mom's house is that the shit I used to get my ass beat for is now what pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> That's the joke, bro. And it's like, mom, do you realize I furnished? Uh, I bought. So when my mom moved to a new house, I uh, she used to whoop me all the time for being a class clown and disruptive. So when she moved to her new house, I bought her like a seventy-inch flat screen, a sofa, and I furnished her whole bedroom. And I was like, you understand, like class clown money bought this, right? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. She just didn't think it was going to be like a lucrative position or what? I guess when you're, when you, if you don't have somebody in your family or that you know. Uh, My mama still don't have faith in me, bro. Hilarious. <laughs> that, 
That probably drives you though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to get mama's approval? Yeah, she still don't fuck with me. Like, <laughs> Hilarious. Dude, you're going to shoot your special and she's going to still be sitting there just be like, well, and, until it airs. At right? the end of my, when, when I film my special and she's in the audience and afterwards when we're all chilling in the green room, she'll be like, that's nice, baby, but you still need to look at getting a part-time job. <laughs> I get, I, I'm almost, pop, bro. Wow. My mom asked me at least once a month, do I think about going back to college? I'm like, wow. are you, woman, are you serious? <laughs> Joe Rogan just shouted me out on his podcast. Does that mean anything? She don't get it, bro, because she's from that she's from that generation where you can only go to college to have A, B, and C. She's not from the entrepreneurship generation. What does she do? What does she do? So she works at an insurance firm and she also does real estate. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so she's just true, nose to the ground, crushing right, it, right. work hard. Like yeah. but also and look, there's a lot of like creativity and showmanship in real estate, right? Or is mm -hmm. she behind the scenes? Is she in front of the camera, like trying to smooth people? She's just the owner. Like me and her, we have a company together called FYDL, uh, and that's our uh, real estate company. So like we have uh, a few rental houses under that umbrella, uh, and I pretty much run everything because she's a horrible, hor. When I so I just took over the business uh, <laughs> throughout quarantine because she was doing a lot of stuff behind my back. So she was letting the lady, uh, so this, so they're all in Georgia. Right. So it's cheaper rent, so it's like 750 to $800 a month. 650 I think is our cheapest. And I found out from our old apartment manager that my mom okayed a lady to pay $75 a week. What? Yeah, and I was- To live in the bathtub? No, to live in the house. What the fuck? We have houses, no. <laughs> And I was like, yes, yeah, your time is up. <laughs> I was like, it's, it's, time's up I on said, your business I, deals. I said, I'm not trying to make friends like this. I was telling her like this. I was like, the real estate is what's going to allow me when I'm in my 40s to yeah. not have to be on the road every week. Yeah. Good for you. Right. Setting that up already. Right. That is something that, I mean, and it's becoming more and more of that for comics where it's like, hey, man, like create your own opportunities, create exactly, your own good luck. Bro. I mean, with... Uh, I mean, you see with people, and you being one of them, moving here to Austin. Yeah. Uh, you're from where originally? Uh, I was raised in Macon, Georgia. Okay. So the home of Lil Richard, Otis Redding, and the Almond Brothers. I love that. That's yeah, a fucking to, went, strong three. I went to school with, with uh, Otis Redding's grandkids. Wow. Yeah. How were they? Spoiled. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, but I grew up Georgia affluent, I'll say that. Not California affluent, because, you know, like the money, like, but I mean, it was... My my parents did well for the area they lived in. Nice. Like where I grew up at, you know, if you can bring in one hundred and twenty thousand dollars together, you're doing very well. Cause sure. You can get a five bedroom, four bathroom house in Macon, Georgia, during early two thousands for probably a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty. How many parts of Georgia are still um... backwards? Yeah. <laughs> Ninety nine percent of it. Fuck. Macon's pretty backwards. It has its areas that are pretty backwards. Um, there's, By the way, know, that's such a uh, polite way of saying just ignorant, right, racist, right. completely I like fucked. to say backwards because I love where I was raised. but Because um, there are nice pockets, right, of the South where you're like, people get it. Or is it truly like lopsided to where it's like 70-30 so or what? I'll tell you how, how backwards Macon is. We still have a sign at our train station in, Georgia, in Macon, Georgia that says colored waiting room. Shut the fuck up. Pull the clip. There's, yes. <laughs> They can pull George, that. can you pull that up? Make it, George. Yeah. You I mean, see it? I don't want your computer to crash or, you know, for you to get some sort of... Uh, you see it, though? No, we always have it up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you pull it up again? Uh, make it, Georgia. Uh, colored waiting room. What the fuck? Yeah. And there's still people that are walking around who... See, they're saying, should it be removed? This isn't 80 should years... This isn't 40 years ago. This is recently. I mean, also, this article <laughs> is traumatizing the headline said should the colored waiting room be removed there's not even like an obvious like it's just there's like we're all, well, look we're open to talk about it Sh wow but you know see colored waiting room look at that and you know there's just no shortage of old white men that are just like i mean it's been it's an institution it's a sign see here's what i'll say about georgia and was what I love about the South. I love blatant racism. 
Why? I don't like subtle racism. Because in Georgia, people who don't fuck with black people or any other people of color make that shit known. So there's no guessing. In California, it's subtle. <sighs> Break it down for me. So it's like they'll kick it with you but still don't like you. Still Whoa. don't like your ethnic group. I like blatant. I don't like blacks. I don't like Mexicans. I don't like Chinese people. I love that. I know not to fuck with you. Yeah. But you subtly hiding it. I'm fucking with you, but you don't even fuck with my ethnic group. I get that. Yeah. So at least it just spells it out for you. You don't yeah. have to waste your time. Yeah. Uh, have you dealt with your fair share of... Uh, oh, bro, I, I was called a nigga at the age of like six. My first fight in school was because... Well, in my defense, when I saw that picture posted on Instagram, it was the first black person in my uh, feed, and so I felt like... Which one? Okay, I was trying to make a joke. Nobody picked up on that. Well, hello. What? You said I was called... Uh, oh. When I was six, and I said, in my defense, it was the first one to come on my feed, so I felt like I needed to... Okay, you know what? Well, well... <laughs> hey... Uh, I got it now. I got it now. Uh, but, I was, but I love that, because yeah. you weren't looking in my direct... Now, how many times do you need to feel some sort of uh just blatant racism i guess to where you develop a real uh defense mechanism or hatred towards like like if you dealt with uh uh just an onslaught of uh of racism in a certain regard and the guys let's say a lot of them looked like me would you be able would it be tougher for you to sit here right now and do the pod because when you look at my face you'd be like you're reminding you're triggering me to like the types of people that would uh that were more popular as far as throwing the bullshit my way i mean bro um i have a grandmother who's half white and i have white family members and my granddaddy is probably one of the most well, he's deceased now, but was probably one of the most anti-white people you ever meet, and even though his wife was half white. And um, no, I still respect individuals, and I still, but I have a different outlook of racist people, I feel, than most other black people, dog, because like, I was probably like 13 or 14, bro, and uh, I told this story not too long ago on, on some pod, and my dirt bike stalled, I was, so my mom lives in Monroe County, uh, which is right outside of Macon. That's where they live now. Yeah. And um, my dirt bike stalled out in a field, and in that field was a Klan rally. Shut the fuck up. And these motherfuckers helped me get my dirt bike unstuck out of the mud and told me to just get out of there. What? That's very unclanny of them, isn't it? I feel like... Dude, that's not even... It's almost not even fair that they did that, because now it's just kind of <laughs> fucking with your perspective about... I feel like a lot of Klan's members are not extremists. Did you say thank you? How did that exchange I end? Just, I just fucking was kicking the hell out of my starter, trying to just get just that. Trying to get the fuck <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, I was just hitting the, hitting the gas, trying to get up out of there. Were they at least like, did they split the difference on their uh, salutations? Was it like, all right, get on out of here, you know? N-word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> Have a nice day, you know, and then. <laughs> they were actually nice, bro. They, they came and got my, my, my dirt bike out. And, That's confusing. And put me up. Yeah, bro, it was. All right, so shit like that gives you what? An, a more open mind or just a... It gives me a more open mind and it gives me a chance to, to also see that at the end of the day, some of these people are human. Like, bro, I, you know, I, I'm not the most... I'm not the person who has the most likability or likes everyone and I still like individuals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, like I, I grew up, bro, around some guys who you would see and be like, there's no way he likes black people. I'm talking about Confederate flag, belt buckle, rifle rack in the back of his truck. Wow. I grew up around a lot of those guys, and I think it just gave me a different perspective. Did you, uh, was comedy always kind of, you know, running through your veins at this stage in life? Yeah, I think that's also what allowed me to be able to enter, and also, you know, uh, just having uh, the ability to allow stuff to just roll off my back, roll off, roll off my back. Wow. Because I mean, you know, I've been around a group of white guys, rednecks, and they've said the N word, and I'm like, and I just laugh it off because like, what am I about to do? They they outnumber me fifteen to one. Just let them say it. <laughs> and at what point did you start fighting fire with fire and start? You can't. Not even with words, huh? I mean, not when you're that outnumbered. Because yeah. like, what am I gonna do? Yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? If you on a train. And you going somewhere like in LA and you got a crazy motherfucker fucking with you or harassing people, 
what are are you gonna? You can't. You're kind of locked. Yeah, you got to be smart about it. Yeah, it's, you, like, it's like it's like oh shit, boy, you stupid dog. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, hey, look, man, uh, Andy and Travis, y'all can say the N word. <laughs> Around me, but if you say it around some other black people, I'm not responsible for the consequences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's the type of joke, I, you know. Right. Um, okay, so you were class clown, mm -hmm. and then who were like your comedic influence? You said Red Fox. Who were like the people that you would see that made you go, "Oh fuck, I think I want to try to do that at some point." So, um, did you have funny family members? Was your mom even my uncle? My yeah. uncle Aubrey. He okay. works at the post office. And uh, everybody says he should be a comedian. We're like the same person, bro. Like, speak our mind. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I come from a, a family that hates niggas but loves black people. <laughs> 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 bro, my granddaddy used to say, if he used to be like, if there's a such thing as reincarnation, I would rather come back as a white person's dog than a nigga. <laughs> That was my high school yearbook quote. <laughs> this was this really came out of his mouth, bro. Oh my god! He was like, "It's so hard being a nigga, man. I can't." Yeah. <laughs> Does he say this at the post office? Is he's like, "All no, right, that's my granddad who said that." Oh, okay, gotcha. But that's I turned that so I turned that what my granddad was saying into a joke. You know what I'm saying? Because it was so funny, bro. But my my uncle would probably say that, bro. He uh, he say all the time, "I can't stand niggas," but I love black people. But a lot of black people say that, right? So what, he's just firing off zingers like when you're a kid? Like what What about his day-to-day -day are you picking up on where you're like, oh, this is funny and it's affecting my sensibility? Well, he has what you call the, um, what I like to call it. I like to call it the uh, social comedian. Not the, not the on purpose funny. He's not on purpose funny. Great. But he's situational. Yeah. Like, I, I'm because you know, people be like, I want to do comedy. I'm like, Are you funny on purpose? Yeah. Like, can I give you 10 minutes and you purposefully be right. funny? Right. Like, it's a big difference. Yeah. Around 20 motherfuckers you know. Oh, yeah. Versus, let me put you in a room full of 100 strangers and within 30 seconds, they have to like you and trust you. Different, different skill sets. <laughs> but yeah, he would, he would, uh, I don't know what a zinger is. That's a very white word. A zinger? Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you, you shoot off zingers daily on Kill Tony with Tony. Oh. That's like a zinger. Oh, just talking shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. A fuck, uh, like a, being a sniper with uh, with jokes, one liners, whatever. Like that came from me being a chubby child. Right. And you know, um, it just got to a point you tired of hearing it, so you you started shooting back. Like we call it shooting back. Like when we were on Kill Tony, and you were fucking annihilating me, but and you know I was what? Not saying back, and I and that was those were zingers. Like that's I was just fielding. And swallowing one after the other. You know what, what? I don't think I've ever told you this. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever said it on any platform. But the reason you got it like that, yeah. I didn't I didn't know white comedians when I first got on Kill Tony. I didn't know a lot of the, the, the mainstream white comedians. Yeah. I thought you were Andrew Schultz. <laughs> so take every, it. everybody was like, hey, Andrew Schultz, when he gets on, he's going to roast the shit out of you. And somebody had told me, like, oh, yeah, this is an episode of Andrew Schultz. I'm behind the curtains, so I don't get to hear the name. So I'm like, oh, this is Schultz? I got his ass. So that's why I went hard at you. <laughs> yeah. Because well, I'm like, I'm a, like, my thing is I'm going to hit you hard with a, a right hook and then see what your jab looked like. Yeah. Well, and I got <laughs> lit up on the comment section because, you know, as you've, you know, in my act and doing crowd work and the way I handle hecklers and, like, even just the way that I, once I get to know somebody, like to go have a back and forth. But that's my thing. It's like, right. and I want to ask you about that is, how much do you need to know the person to really be comfortable? Because you and Tony now on Kill Tony, uh, that's impressive. Did you go out the nose? Yeah. I got so many questions, Dave. The, uh, the more, it's actually harder to roast Tony because I, I know him now. That's what I want to ask. Because when we got out there, I'd met you a couple times. And I told you this after when I brought you out to Oxnard because I immediately was like, I like this guy, you know, he's working at the store. I have a soft spot for young comics that are like, that I can just recognize an immediate like grind and, and hustle. Right. And you had that and I liked you and you were cool. And like, you know, I need another black friend in my life. And, uh, <laughs> no, no. And uh, I just liked you. And so it made, it immediately made it tougher for me. And Tony told me, he's like, you gotta just go after him. <laughs> he's like, now you know how the show works. He's like, and I know what you do. You gotta just do it. That's a good Tony right? impersonation. <laughs> little fire marshal Bill meets a little like Adam Devine, you know, just a little, you know. 
And, and Tony's like, you just go for it. He's like, Dave's going to go for it. You got to jump in the saddle, go right back. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, all right. So I'm trying to like fire myself up to do this. But again, I'm like meeting myself halfway with this like, oh, fuck. But I don't want to like hurt his feelings. I've, like no, I'm that sensitive that. about it. Fuck all that. Yeah. Because in my head, like, and then you start laying into me about my eyes and the size of my lips. And I even told, I even had this thought when you were saying like, <laughs> look at you, fat ass black guy lips and your fucking big baggy stone, whatever. And, I, and you kept commenting about my eyes and my lips. And so in my head, I was going to say something about like, you know, hey man, like, are you trying to fuck me or roast me? And I told that to Tony after, and he's like, why didn't you say that? I was like, I don't, dude, I just like, you, and you know this, you have a moment to, to the timing, to yes. think it and say it, yes. and, and otherwise the moment's gone. It's like music, you gotta find that pocket. Yeah. Like, roasting is about a pocket, like, it's like, um, when me and, uh, when me and uh, Andrew Schultz were roasting. Yeah, which was great. I told him, I said, I said something about, I said something about your teeth. I said something about his teeth. And he goes, yours work better. Right after I said it. If he had waited a little bit longer, yeah. it wouldn't have worked. But yeah. it's me immediately after I said it. Have you had, uh, okay, so you started, you started getting into that in school when you said you would like fire back at yeah. kids. You would roast kids. Mm -hmm. Was it because they were coming at you? Because Tony's spoken Absolutely. about that where he would get teased. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. So That's they'd say shit and you were just like, all right, what am I gonna do, beat this kid up? Let me just, yeah. or is it more? I got to a point where I couldn't beat kids up no more because my mom told me like, yeah, the police came to my house one time. I used to beat the fuck out of kids, bro. What? I was a bully, bro. Whoa. Yeah. Because, or were you defending yourself against other bullies? Uh, it was just like, I'd fight words with fists. So gotcha. instead of fighting words with words, yeah. I fight words with fists. It's okay. Yeah. That's a normal kid thing to do. <laughs> right. Um, and my mom was like, you're going to end up in jail. Because the police, I put a- How uh, bad did you beat one of these kids? Well, this kid named uh, Nicholas- Yeah, it's a very punchable name. Should I say his full name? No, nah, I mean, as Nicholas does it. Nicholas, this kid <laughs> named Nicholas, he was a mixed kid. And uh, <laughs> we were at the bus stop and he said something. And I put his ass in a- fucking chokehold because I had started taking Taekwondo and the motherfucker passed out, bro. And the police got called on me. What the fuck? Yeah. Was this as the bus was like the pulling bus up? bus wasn't here yet. But his mom. That's the wrong time to be like trying to bust balls, by the way. There's only other kids standing <laughs> around who don't want any part of a, a mid-morning fight. But he was like a pretty boy. He had like curly hair. He was light skin. You know that oh, fucking, So you were looking to take him out already. Yeah, because it's like, bitch, <laughs> you trying to be better than me? Fuck that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then you start to get what a little, little, little momentum going, little confidence with just your like so joking ability. It was this guy. I was in the fourth grade. His name was uh, Winfred Davis. Great name. Yeah, that's my boy. And uh, I ain't seen him in twenty years. However long ago fourth grade was, and um, he was cool. But he was cool because <coughs> it's not that. He, it's not that he looked better than me. It's not that he dressed better than me, but he was cool because of his choice of words. Wow. And we started hanging around, and I'm like, bro, like, what's, like, bro, you know, teach me to, I want to, I want to, you know. You back, get like five or six syllables per sentence, Winford. What's going on with that? <laughs> I was like, bro, I want to be like you, man. Like, I want to, you know, Whoa. have the ladies laughing. He was just composed, huh? Yeah. And he so was, you were getting fired up and fighting, and he was like, he'd yeah. take it. And he told Sit me, in it, throw it back. And he told me that he would watch Comic View at night. And he would just use the jokes that he saw on Comic View in, like, the classroom. Whoa. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. So I used to sneak and watch Comic View and hear some of the jokes the adults were saying, come use them on kids. Oh, my God. Yeah. So even though the kids probably couldn't understand. No, it would work. Oh, yeah? Because the material be, was. Because let me see. One of the. What what was one of the uh, the first jokes uh, that I used was like uh, I would have been your daddy, but the dog beat me upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts a kid. Oh yeah, man, <laughs> dude. Even kids that would just say they were gonna fuck my mom and didn't know my mom, but even if they had one specific, <laughs> like my mom's, you know. Very busty and damn. Let me the see ki the kids. I'll send you some picture. pics. Yeah, yeah. How uh, old is she? Seventy one. Oh no, no, no. Still clicking and ticking though. Okay. Yeah. Where she live? Seattle. Up in Seattle. Yeah. She. Uh, they would make comments about that, and it would just drive me up the fucking wall. I'm surprised dude. you weren't whooping kids' ass. I mean, a few, and then I started slinging. It was just like words right back because a lot of it. Quite honestly, a lot of teasing I got were from the uh, 
the younger kids I would throw shade back. I'd try to fight the kids that were older than me and bigger than me, like in my neighborhood, that were like mm -hmm. in high school when I was in sixth grade. But also I was a big kid, so they just like. How was that growing up in Seattle, dog? What? Uh, it was. The white women up there love black guys. They do. God damn. They I do. Was, I was there was a girl named Ellen Brolite that every kid had a, a crush on, and she was like the first to truly develop in high school, and uh, and she was only the black guys, and it was like we felt like we lost one, you know. Bro, I had a layover there for two and a half hours and probably got like six numbers. It was insane at the airport. Yes. Wow. It was. It, I was like, what is this? Well, again, dude, you got that big like million dollar <laughs> smile. Like you got the fucking hair that looks like you shampoo with syrup. Like it's you know. <laughs> Like you got a cool look, Dave. You always have, and that that also is why uh, you know when you mention things of like you know being down here and like the opportunities that obviously L.A. You moved to L.A. to to do this, right? Yeah, when because I was a teenager. When you were a teenager, so you so, okay. So you first set was fourteen, six, sixteen, I was like sixteen. Was that still in Georgia? That was still in Georgia. Where at a comedy club? No, it was at school. Oh, that when you got to go in front of the class? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we but I did my first set. So in high school, I got on the MTV show, Your Mama. So I was like a fucking star. Wilmer Valderrama's Wilmer Your Mama? Wilmer Valderrama, Your Mama. Yeah, dude. I was working at a casting office uh, where the uh, head casting director was dating a guy who produced that show. The guy I now work out with, we train at Wilmer's house. I keep telling him every time I see him to bring that show back. That's awesome. I love that show. Truly because it was the closest thing on TV that had any sort of like raw stand-up comedy for guys that you felt like you could right. relate to more than a, a big dog on Comedy Central, right? right? So did you see that show and go, I got to get on that? Um, so about the age of 17, I was still playing football, but I knew, well, I knew I wanted, I knew I wanted to be in Hollywood since I was like in the fourth grade, because I saw this episode of, I used to watch Fresh Prince, and I saw the episode when D.L. Hughley uh, came to Will's house and did stand-up, and I was like, I want to live in Hollywood. But I was just strictly, like, on the acting tip. Like, I was acting since I was young. Oh, wow. Uh, like, theatrical and stuff. And I did a couple of local commercials, you know, like, people would... For what? Like, car dealerships, you know, I was that local guy. Like, there's not a lot of actors and making so anytime you needed a kid in a commercial i'd be the guy david lucas got the call right you remember yeah. any of the dialogue from one of the spots nah bro that was um, were you just like yo look at this fucking ford focus it's I'm pretty bomb 30 now i don't remember that <laughs> shit <bro>. <laughs> well you turn 30 it's a different beast <laughs> uh okay so so la is what intimidating to you overwhelming like you're coming here when i moved to when i so yeah i um I uh, was 17 when I got on MTV on Mama. Uh, the college football thing didn't work out. When I was like 19 and a half, about to be 20, <clears throat> I moved to LA. <clears throat> Cause in between uh, me not playing college football no more and uh, not knowing what I wanted to do in my life, I got in, I was like a six or seven month span when I was just getting into a lot of trouble. And I missed going to jail a few times. And I was Damn. like, man, I need to, do something but I was too scared to like leave yeah away from home and uh, my cousin who's a rapper I thank him to this when I become a million I'm giving him a hundred grand he basically came to me and he's like hey you got four weeks to get your shit together we going to LA and we dropping your ass off that's what he said at what age were you I was like 19 and a half fuck <laughs> so what you do in that four weeks get it together uh, fuck, should I tell this story? My mama not gonna watch this. <laughs> hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you're enjoying this episode. Obviously, it's a very difficult time for everyone right now. We're all uh, challenged in finding a day-to-day -day routine that, uh, that makes our lives uh, consistent and awesome. And if there's something that's interfering with your happiness right now or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. Uh, BetterHelp is a professional counseling service online, private, and it's so convenient. Um, I've used it for a little bit now. It's truly the only way uh, that I've found uh, to help get uh, my own issues dealt with on my own time uh, at my own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text 
with your licensed professional counselor right now. They're specialized in depression, anger, stress, anxiety, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief or relationships, uh, sleeping, which I have a lot of uh, trouble with, trauma, self-esteem, anything that you share with them is confidential. And guess what, if you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, at any time you can request a new one for no additional charge. There's 3,000 US licensed therapists across all 50 states, available worldwide. And again, there's four ways to communicate with them, text, chat, phone, and video. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. It's available on any desktop, mobile web, Android, and iOS apps. Schedule a video or phone session, generally weekly, unless your therapist schedules more, uh, unless you just are really not sleeping and need to get some, uh, some, some additional chats in. Uh, there's broad expertise in the network, which may not uh, which may not be locally available in many areas. Financial aid is available for those who qualify. It's secure, it's convenient, it's professional, and above all, it's affordable. All right, it's truly the most affordable option I found. So right now, all ALN listeners are going to get 10% off your first month with a discount code about last night. So why not get started today and start making some changes for the better in your life? You deserve it. So go to betterhelp.com slash about last night. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor that you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash about last night. Betterhelp.com slash about last night and get 10% off your first month with promo code about last night. And now back to the episode. So, um, I was so young, my mama didn't trust nobody. So I had to act like she knew this guy named Blake, who used to do a lot of theatrical plays with me, but he was probably four or five years older than me. Okay. Uh, if she ever sees it, she's going to kick my ass. All right. Um, so I had somebody pretend like they were Blake and that him and his mom had an apartment in L.A. that I was going to stay at. Oh, my God. You hired people to play. <laughs> That's such a Hollywood thing. Yeah, so I, I had my mom call this person and act like, and I was like, hey, you got, I, I, she's just the only way she's gonna let me go out there. You gotta really act like you and your mom, you gotta act like you're Blake, and you gotta act like you and your mom are okay with me staying at your apartment. And my mom's gonna Western Union you the money every month. Holy shit. But she did, she ended up Western Union, West, she ended up sending me Western Union money. So, um, how did these people take to that? Were they like, "Yeah, we got you." It's my friend. Yeah, yeah. Who played so, the mom? Nobody. She she never talked to the mom. Just Blake. Just, just Blake. Um, but in actuality, I got on uh, MySpace, and I typed in Los Angeles, and I just started adding people, like adding women, because I knew I was a good looking nineteen year old man. I was just started adding like older women because I I like since. Like my senior year in high school, I had been dating older women, so I knew how older women felt about young guys. Wow. So I started adding older women, and I'm not gonna name this lady because me and her fell out, but I found this one lady who lived in, uh, that was, uh, it was on, she lived, what is that, Reseda? She lived Mm -hmm. on Sherman Way in Tampa, across the street from a Wendy's. (laughs) Yeah, I still remember it. (laughs) Of course. 2009, bro. Um, By the way, this is the beginning of your movie. The, right. You on MySpace, 19-year-old David Lucas adding yes. women. Hearing with that voiceover of what you just said, being like, I just started adding bitches left and right because I knew how older women felt about younger men. Continue. So her MySpace, she, this was, she. I kind of got catfished on MySpace. Not of saying, Not saying that I really got catfished. So uh, she looked way better in the pictures than she did when I actually showed up to her house. Surprise, surprise. She was like 75 pounds heavier. Yikes. I was like, fuck. I'm a really, couldn't <laughs> sleep with her. I mean, because that's what they want. They just want young penis. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I cannot. You're like, this is this is this has to be good. There's a Wendy's across the street. So um, yeah, I stayed there for like a month and a half, dude. Uh, I stayed there for like a month and a half, and she was like, "You got to get out," because I wasn't fucking her, you know. So I was, because I was just like, I can't. stay with her for a month and a half. Oh my God. Did you, uh, did she ever like, I don't know, bring up the L word? Was she like falling for you even though you were playing hard to get? Yeah, she knew I didn't want her. And I started talk. I think what really made her mad was I bringing started, over other girls to fuck? No, no, she saw me. She came in from work one day and she saw me talking to another girl. Yep. And that, I think, set it off. It was off. a red flag. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then she would cook food and be like, you can't have it. And I'm like, damn, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> yeah, for real. But she was getting petty. Oh, and I'm man. like, I'm a fucking teenager, man. <laughs> she had a son that was older than me. Even he's like, mom, you got to chill the fuck out. Like, well, he kid. didn't like me. Oh, of course not. Bro, we almost, You're his age trying to get with his mom. We almost got into a fight. Of course you did. But, um, yeah, so that happened. And then I ended up uh, staying with the girl who was braiding my hair. And then uh, I ended up getting into college there and just using college money to pay for my apartment after that. Wow. Yeah. But the like there was when she put me out, bro, I literally will confess that I started crying because I was like, because when I moved out here, my family was like, you'll be back in six months. They had zero faith in me. Why? Mama's boy. Ain't you know? Ain't really. They also wanted you back, probably, right? Yeah. They're 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 putting that on you a little bit because right. they, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of people that go through that with families. What's that? The bottom. So I can keep giving you this uh, exclusive interview. <laughs> <laughs> if you want more juicy stuff. <laughs> some more ice. You want some more no, ice? I'm good. I'm good. Cool. So yeah. Um, well, no. There's a lot of people, and, and I mean, shit. Here's one of the benefits of just having, I guess, not a ton of family around, my sister being gone at a boarding school and me living with just my mom. I only had one person to either say, it's not gonna happen or it's gonna happen, right? And I she, was, and I so- I was pretty spoiled, bro. Like, right, so my single mom was just like, go for it. I think there ain't nothing you can't do. I was gonna stay close to Seattle, even though I got into school in LA because I wanted to stay by my mom because she was by herself. And she's like, you gotta get the fuck out of here. Like, you're not gonna make, you're not gonna do what you wanna do in Seattle, you gotta go there. But guess what? She also was like, yeah, I fucking, I'm going to miss you. I want you to stay. So it's. My mom threatened me a lot. That, like, yeah, because she wanted you to stay close to home. Like, bro, in high school and up until I moved to L.A., I had a credit card. Wow. I mean, I didn't go crazy on it. You know, just if I needed food, I'd be like, hey, just mom. Just sne sneakers and Herbie's cream or like what were you buying? I had sneakers. I like probably buy like three pairs of sneakers a month. I'd yeah. be like, hey, mom, the, the new Jordans came out. I'm going to grab those. All right. <laughs> Uh, hey mom, uh, I'm not gonna be home for dinner. I'm gonna grab food, all right? Like shit like that. Nothing like taking a bitch out of there. Right. But uh, when I moved to LA, she took that. Uh, so she was I, trying to. So I mean, look, a good move because it truly set you up to have to make Brian, it on your own, right? I be telling these kids nowadays. I came so young, and I'm still fairly young in Fuck the terms yeah. of stand up comedy. I Hell just yeah. turned thirty. You know, a lot and of people. So you're how many years truly into stand up? Well, because you said first I was 16, but I'm saying like when you started, when you're in the thick of it grinding. I say seven years. Yeah. Seven. When I, because I, I went to college in LA, graduated, and then after that, uh, I just. Hit the road. Yeah. Start going. Mm -hmm. Start coming around the store. Yeah. Is that true? No. Okay. So um, I'm one of those guys who. And I thank my ex-girlfriend to this day, bro, because, like, I have horrible social anxiety. So uh, what a lot of people don't know is that um, a big part of comedy is camaraderie. Yeah. I don't think people understand that. Like, They don't. Like, killing on stage is one part of it. But, I mean, you offered me to go on the road with you just seeing 60 seconds of me do my thing, not even knowing if I had 20 minutes to go on the road. Yeah. That's what I'm like. A big part of it is camaraderie, likability and able to talk to people. And I did not have that. I, you know, there was a point in my life where I had stopped drinking. So uh, in order for me to be in like social settings with a lot of people, I need to be like tipsy, drinking something. And I had stopped drinking. So I would literally just come to the comedy store, do potluck and leave. Don't talk to nobody, make no friends with no door guys, make no friends with anybody else, any other bookers. Because you were not comfy if you didn't have a little bit of liquid courage, right, huh? Right, I had stopped drinking. Did somebody tell you to stop drinking, or did you figure that out for yourself? Well, I had became a little bit of an alcoholic, and I knew it was a problem because I was hiding alcohol in Starbucks cups. I was going to say, what was, the, <laughs> what was the giveaway? You're going to Starbucks, but like, let me get a double jack on the rocks. They're like, dude, we got Frappuccinos <laughs> and cold brew. I was going to, because my old roommate was, uh, he used to sleep on the stairs, and I'd be like, hey, man, you slept on the stairs last night. I think it's time you take care of yourself and check in uh, to rehab. He's like, oh, you think just because I'm sleeping on the stairs, I'm drunk? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude, because you're not a cat. <laughs> but so it's always something that, that gives you a little bit of uh, light on the situation. So well, then my, you- so My then you daddy was an alcoholic. Okay, so, so it's in I, the fam. Yeah, I just want to make sure, you know, that I was able to stop. And I was like, I don't really need it, and, you know. 
So what's it like being at the store then coming in and coming out? Are people saying, are people like, yo, hey, you're funny. Why aren't you hanging? Or are you just getting out before you can even cross paths? They'd be like, good set, bro. Good set. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I got to go. I got to go. I'll be like, I got another spot. I got another spot. I got yep. another spot. Nobody questions that. Right, right. So it's like. Because that's such an interesting thing for I've you. I've been to, at the store. I mean, I was too young the first time I did my set at the store. Oh, really? They don't yeah. know that? No. Nah. Yeah. I mean, you know you know how it was back in the day at the store. Of course. <laughs> of course, <laughs> man. Uh, even when I was, I used to work the phones there, you know, and it was just like, that's why it was so crazy to th see the uh, the true transition and the resurgence that it's had. But Now you're not getting in there. It's like it's fucking Pentagon. <laughs> It'd be tough now. I mean, we'll see when it comes back. Are you, because I mean, I'm sure there's probably a little bit of uh, appeal to come back and try to get past, right? Uh, I'm gonna still be a door guy, but I think I'm just gonna do like on call. I'm just gonna like uh, cover people's shifts. I don't think I'm gonna go back to like doing four or five. I don't really need it. Oh, but I also love, I love a lot of things about what you're doing. And one is the uh, recognition of like the, the grind. And I think it's everything that you've just talked about mm -hmm. up until this point and not taking anything for granted. Yeah. And, uh, and not throwing shade at people for that get, because look, we both know people that have gotten things. There, This is why our business is great. There's no replacement for the work and the reps, you know, but there are people that, yeah, definitely don't have to struggle as much to get there. There's people that have taken, that have their folks that- um, But that they never make it. Truly. I think if you don't have a little bit, if you don't have that true yeah. in the core yeah. of you, you gotta thing that's- a, You yeah. gotta have a little dog in you to make it. Yeah. And I mean, that's like I tell a lot of comics now. I'm like, bro, y'all don't understand how easy y'all got it in 2020, 2021. When I first started comedy in L.A., you had to have a fucking job. There was no Uber Eats, Postmates, Uber and Lyft to drive where you could set your own schedule, fucking drive when you want to and yeah. still make a decent living or yeah. drive when you finish spots. Do your sets at night and not, right. not ever miss a set. Right. Like, I had to have a real job that had an effed up schedule. And sometimes you wouldn't be able to do the spots you wanted. Exactly. And you'd work to a point to where you go, wow, I'm on this show tonight. And then something happens with your job and you have to skip it. Yeah. It's balance. It's uh, prioritizing. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you start coming around the store more. What prompts that? What gives you the little boost of like, you know so, what? I need to step out of my comfort zone. I was my, I was, my baby mama was pregnant with my youngest kid and this was in was it 2019 yeah because 2020 is when all the so it was 2019 uh well she wasn't pregnant yet excuse me at a, in 2018 i was like man i'm about to be 28 27 whatever i was about to be and i was like man i, I really don't know what this shit is for me like you know like feeling that like I think every comedian gets to that point. Fuck yeah, I thought about that before you walked in. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, man, you know, like, you know, I don't have to work a job, but damn, these shows are few and far in between. <laughs> and lucky enough, you got a decent job to where you could cover me if I'm, yeah, because my, my youngest daughter's mom is a nurse practitioner. So, Huge. you know, so she was, that's the perfect job you want to have if you're a struggling comic Fuck for yeah. a female, for your spouse. Um, so I was like, you know what? Um, I said, I think I'm just about to go back to school. I'm going to take my mom's advice and go back to school. And she said, I'll support you, but what I want you to do is go to the comedy store every Monday, and you're not coming back here until it's at least 12 o'clock. Whoa, dude. That's what she told me. She fucking doctor filled your ass. Yeah. You need to start making friends, David, okay? Because <laughs> you're not developing relationships <laughs> that are meaningful, okay? You're coming in, you're coming out, kind of the way that you and I met. Uh, now, that's fucking huge of her to do that. Very selfless and an instrumental uh, she's moment. The re she's the reason I got a job at the comedy store. Whoa. Because then you start hanging, around, uh, hanging out more. Well, not even that. There was a Monday that I was not going to go to potluck. And I was just like, cause you know, the comedy store is still the comedy store. There's still 200 people that sign up every fuck. So I went like three, four months without getting up. And I think it was like April. Or maybe I got up in January and I didn't get up again. Break that down to people who don't know real quick. What's that? When you're trying to get up at the open mic at the store. Oh, there's 200. <laughs> 200 motherfuckers sign up for this, for what, 10 spots. 200 people. 
Sign up for 10 spots every Monday. For three minutes. For three measly, <laughs> meaningful, yeah. impactful minutes. Yeah. This, these three minutes can change your life. Yep. It literally changed my life. Adam Eager, the booker, comes to watch, right? Yeah. So. You get into a groove. You, you get picked more frequently. But if you don't get picked for three, four months, dude, that's discouraging as shit, no? Very. So. I feel like we should have taken a commercial break right there. The way you just went. Very. We'll be right back. And when we come back, <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys about when I. Okay. Yeah. So the Monday, uh, she tells me. I tell her I'm not going. I said, I'm not going, babe. Like, it's, it's been three, four months. Like, she's like, I tell you what. What time does potluck sign up start? I said, like, 530. She said, I get off at 5. I'll be home at 530. And she said, if you're home, you might as well just leave. I said, what do you mean? She said, if you're at home, I'm not saying we're going to break up, but I'm going to be very pissed. That's what she basically said. I said, all right, fuck it. Go, I get up, and that's when Adam puts me on family and friends. Whoa, and then like, that night? Yeah, and then like two sets later, he offered me the job at the store. Every time- You're trying to make me cry, dude? Every time that I didn't want to go to the store is when something very impactful happened. Yeah. My friend, uh, Brian Tucker, uh -huh. I had stopped signing up for Kill Tony. He was in town. He said, bro, I want to go sign up for Kill Tony. I said, man, I don't, I don't never get picked on that shit. I don't want to sign up for it. And I said, uh, and I was already on Family and Friends at the comedy store, so I'm already like, my spots are good now. Yeah. Like, I I don't got to go to the store until 8 o'clock. <laughs> He's like, man, let's sign up for Kill Tony. I said, bro, pick me up and I'll go. He picked me up. We both signed up. We're literally about to leave, bro. Literally. And that's, it's like, I tell people all the time, when you don't feel like doing something, it's when you should do it the most. Because I was not going to do Kill Tony that day. and That's that, great advice, by the way, and you can't say it unless you've lived it. Keep going. Right. Yeah. And uh, Tony called me up. We roasted each other. And I was on the road that following week, and he saw me at the store. He's like, hey, why didn't you sign up last week? I was on the road, bro. He's, He's pretty like, good, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, come back next week. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll sign up. Yeah, man, we'll see what happens. That's he knew he knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> so I came back, did that set, and then another set, and with Michael Bisping, and became the regular. Which it was like, bro. and for people that again need perspective on the moment, Kill Tony became a staple show in L.A. at the store in the on country Monday. now, on now Monday. globally on Mondays, every Monday. Oh, Kill Tony gave me fans, bro. Gave I, you fans G I, gave you a fan base, right? right. I can tour anywhere in the world and there'll at least be four or five people in the audience. <laughs> like, I, I, I can go to Australia and at least put 30 people in the, in the seats. That's crazy. I have a lot of fan base in Australia. Gotta get you down there. Yeah. I don't, if, I, if, if, I, if, if season two of Young Rock happens, I'm sure there's some wrestler you can play that I can fucking try to finagle you into. Let's see, who could I play? Uh, Rikishi. Y'all got a Rikishi? Rikisha? Rikishi. Who's that? Rikishi? Are you? <laughs> oh, who? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, his name is not Rikishi? Yeah. Rashiki sounds familiar. It's Rikishi. Rikishi. Yes. I think, doesn't Rikishi play for the fucking Nets? No, Rikishi was a wrestler who put his ass in people's face. There it is. Oh, Rikishi, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I know. I'll dye, I'll dye my hair blonde. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, bro, they should have put me. <laughs> I could have played Mad Dog like Nate Jackson. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. But I'm glad Nate Jackson got That's right, oh, Keisha. Yeah. No, Nate's I got to drop the belly a little bit. All right. Well, we'll find somebody for you. Mark Henry. Mark Henry. Oh, yeah. I'm Mark Henry. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me, yeah. I'll send uh, DJ a picture of you after the show. Yeah, Mark Henry. I already got the locks. Yeah. <laughs> and Mark Henry's from Warner Robins. Oh, for real? Warner Robins, Georgia. Look That's at that old school. Guy, dude. Holy shit. Look at right, Keisha. Put that ass in the face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That is a fucking power move. <laughs> uh, but you know who my favorite wrestler of all time is? Who? Razor Ramon. Wow, that's a good call. Why? He's just a, a scumbag. Sleazy, greasy. He used to flick that toothpick out of his mouth when he walked. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. In wrestling, it's sh- there. I mean, the kind of the the ruder and cruder, the better the uh, the show is, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you still a big wrestling fan? Nah. What keeps you busy hobby wise now? Uh, fishing, writing, um, women. Yeah. Yeah. That's my addiction. I don't do drugs, but I love, I love women. So you got your kiddos, but you're still, but you're out there playing the field. You're swiping. I want five kids. You want five kids? Mm-hmm. You were telling me this when, after we met at the store and then went up to uh, Oxnard, and that's when I also, again, got to see, like, the uh, the curtain pull back a little bit more and see Dave, uh, David the dad. And, uh, and it was really cool because you were, like, showing pics and you were talking about it and you were talking about your responsibilities, but also, like, you, there was an apparent joy of you being a dad. Yeah. In that, though, you were also very real about it because you were, like, venting to us immediately just about some of the, you know, the managements of, like, I got to figure out, like, a, if I'm going to do this gig, I got to get somebody, you know, make sure she's covered. I got to do hard. this. That's the hard part. Has it made you kind of raise your game in life? Give, give uh, me, what are the, uh, the, 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 the pros of being a Now that I make more money, yeah. uh, they'll figure it out. That's how I look at it. Well. I give you the money, you figure out the, the, the babysitting situation. I'm out here. I'm like, you don't complain when you get them checks every two weeks. <laughs> so, hey, here goes six hundred dollars. Figure out who you need to watch them. Yeah. You, you don't. You or, talk- here, or here goes six hundred dollars. Take off for two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take a break. Mom, moms need a break. Yeah, yeah. Do you talk about your kids a lot in your act? I've only nah. seen shorter sets. Yeah, you don't yet. Not really. How come? Probably, By yeah. choice. I don't know. Um, yeah, I just like to leave them out. People Keep it are, private. People, people are weird. No oh, shit, dude. I there was this. I used to post my daughter a lot on Instagram, and uh, I stopped doing that because this one girl like messaged me. She's like, "How's your?" She said my daughter's name, and I'm like, "Yo, you don't even know me. Like, what are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, that's one thing that you're gonna have to start navigating through more. And, and then more. it's like I got a pretty decent following, and it's like I don't want my, I don't want some weird fan who I might have offended or. Some shit like that. My daughter be out with her mom or some shit like that, and they do something. to you. People are crazy, bro. Yeah, how do you manage that now with getting a little bit of a fan base and starting to kind of, like you said, like places you go, there's people coming out. Kill Tony has such a big following and impact, and now you're going on there, for people that don't know, who, who don't watch the show, it's uh, weekly, and you're going on almost every episode to do a fresh 60 seconds. And what was big in L.A. is that the show is always featuring huge right. comic uh, right. uh, guests. Absolutely. So not only you are you uh, a fan favorite, but now you're getting to become a favorite of these people. And if you go out of your way to really... Uh, um, Bro, Russell Peters heard me talking about my daughter on the on Kill Tony, and I come to work <clears throat> like the next day, and there's mountains of gifts for my daughter in 2019. Wow. I didn't ask him for that. Wow. They're like, hey, Russell left something for you. I'm like, Russell? That's fucking crazy, Russell dude. Peters? They're like, yeah, bro. Like, because we were talking about both of our kids liking the LOL. And, bro, he he's huge. And I'm like, man, you he's just- He's such a good dude. You just saved me four, five hundred dollars bro. Appreciate <laughs> yeah, <it>. of course. <laughs> and and anytime you get to come home with presents, it's a fucking banner day. I'm like, that, that was, <laughs> that's nothing to him. <laughs> Are there uh, people that you've met through Kill Tony, guest-wise? Because, you know, from obviously Rogan- now and I just watched that 500 episode, which was really cool because now it looks like I mean, and Joe is just one of many. But the way that people look at you now and recognize you, but also recognize you, but then recognize the uh, the climb, right? Yeah. Recognize the the hustle, the work ethic. But are there people you've met um, that have been like guests on the show that have reached out to you after, aside from like Russell or Joe, or people that you've been fans of that you've been about to start roasting that you're like. Fuck, this is going to be more fun? Like Rappaport, right? Didn't you have a thing with him on Kill Tony? Yeah, but I genuinely don't like him. I don't know. His energy don't do it for me. Right. So that was easier to lay into. Yeah. Um, But I mean, bro, like, especially here in Austin, dog, like, because, like, entertainment is so new to them. Like, Mm -hmm. bro, I'm friends with the people that own the Red Rose and the Yellow Rose, which is a strip club here. Uh, Are they that great? I haven't been yet. Yeah, they're good. And I'm, I hate I'm out of town for the anniversary on the 29th. The anniversary? If you're missing a strip club anniversary, yeah, that's reason to cry. I'm performing. But, uh, Perform- the, <laughs> but the guy who owns the Vulcan texts me. He's like, I got the limo, 
and a table. He's like, you gonna be there? And I was like, nah. Holy shit. What happens at the anniversary of a strip club? That's a good question. It's a great question. I hope somebody get fucked on stage. <laughs> There's got to be some sort of like extra yeah. showmanship. I don't yeah. know if you're bringing animals in or <laughs> obviously you drop balloons from the rafters, but the Red Rose is my favorite. I'm friends with uh, I became friends. I was the first comedian to sell out Anton's. Oh, first shit. Stand up comic. Congrats, dude. Uh, I mean, Kill Tony sold it out, but that's a but the first single comedian he said to sell out Anton's. I became friends with the owner. He owns so much other shit that he's taking me to in Austin. Yeah, that's what's cool down here. I feel like there's a lot of guys that have multiple spots, and it's yeah. like you get on their good side, yeah. you can kind of have a key to the city. So pretty much everywhere I go now is places that people I know own. Could you get me free chips at Subway? Probably can't do that, but we can, take, we can go to Cisco's, Ooh. which is the oldest Tex-Mex restaurant in Austin. You love the food here, yeah? Yeah, oh, the food here is killing L.A., bro. You got to spend $180 to eat good in L.A. Fuck. Yeah, that's one of the many things. I'm about to go to Pete Terry's right after this. Or oh, so, yeah. yeah. Is there Kill Tony tonight? Yeah. I got to probably take a $40 Uber over there. Oh, we'll go together. I'll get it. Oh, let's do it. Yeah, you the guest you. tonight? Huh? You the guest tonight? No, but our, the episode I was on dropped. Tonight. Tonight. Uh, I wonder who's a guest tonight. I was bummed you weren't on it when I was on, because like I said, man, I missed opportunity. You got some roast for me? What's that? Yeah, some roast for me. I mean, look, I wrote a few, I'll be honest, right after that, because I was like, fuck, I cannot be. Because, again, the onslaught of just, like, again, being, like, having a, a decent rep for uh, for crowd work and handling my business, and then seeing people seeing me just come up short and not even try was, like, very disappointing. God and damn. it And it took a real... And it's, what am I just going to get on YouTube and be like, hey, guys, David's a good guy. Like, I was just trying to be nice. Like, <laughs> so I had to just take it and be like, all right, well, you know, next time. And yeah. at the end of the day, it was yeah, like. YouTube is a motherfucker. At right? the end of the day, I, I do not. I, reg I regret not taking a beat and recognizing what it is and, uh, and not trying to fire back at all. Because, you know, again, it's you get to a point and you're there where your brain works in a way where it's there, the things are coming. Now it's just on you to you know, get the timing and delivery right and get it out. So it's like, there's, there was no shortage of things that were popping into my head as you were coming at me. It was just me stopping myself and putting right. a filter on it. Right. And, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get that. How many, do you ever uh, prep for those things? No. It's just all off the cuff. Yeah. So looking at me right now, like, what would you say? Uh, you, <laughs> you look like Batman daddy. Batman daddy? <laughs> <laughs> You look you look like a dad. Other dads would try to tit, would try to titty fuck. Uh, you 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 look like a stepdaddy who let other people discipline his kids. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a fraggle that eats the other fraggles. I don't even know what that is. You, know, <laughs> you never watched Fraggle Rock? Nah. Oh fuck. What is that? Now I want to know. It's a, it, was a, it was like a Muppet show. Oh, shit. <laughs> keep, right, keep going. Keep going. Uh, let's see. <laughs> let's see. You look like you go home and eat mayonnaise sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you're going to die from a heart attack or a fart attack. Oh, God. You look like you uh, jail Joe Hair watching Rocky Balboa. <laughs> I did. Because <laughs> uh, the eye of the tiger. <laughs> All right, that was a little something extra. Uh, you look like Shaq's mom. Oh, that's a good one, bro. That's decent, bro. <laughs> but that's a compliment, too. She's, you look, a hot, she's a hot woman. You look like Amy Schumer's side nigga. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Uh, uh, you look like the only black guy that can't rap or play basketball. You look like you got uh you look like you got a hundred thousand dollar investment in Cupid dot com. <laughs> uh you uh you look like your beard's made out of homeless guys' pubes. You look like you test drive bird scooters for a living. <laughs> uh uh oh, fuck. You look like you go home and put your feet in hot water before you go to sleep. <laughs> that's so See, that's the type of shit like what Tony said where he goes, sometimes you say shit so specific that doesn't even in the context make sense, but it's so funny. Uh, 
you look like you think doggy style is eating meatloaf out of a doggy bag. Boom, pow. You look like <laughs> you look like at the age of eleven, your mama put you in the bed with two poodles. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck, man. You just how, how, uh, they don't. I ain't, they ain't always good, but I always got some. You look like you had to use a shoehorn to get that shirt on. Yeah, <laughs> you look. <laughs> you look like uh, your mama used to bring black guys over at night when she put you to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I wish she did. She was single for a while. Yeah, you see all them fucking Seattle supersonics coming to your house. <laughs> was that Sam Perkins? <laughs> uh, you look like a burnt candle. You look like you've overdosed twice. <laughs> see, it's a speed too, man. <laughs> you look like you smell like a bag of wet change. Uh, you look like you smell like racism <laughs> and marble lights. Oh, and I've never smoked. <laughs> Twice in a night. Um, you look like you let other girls eat your wife's pussy. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. I know you now. It can't be harsh. Yeah. What do your tattoos say? Uh, which ones? Other than we'll eat for food. Uh, you you got to... <laughs> Adam Ray got a thigh tattoo that says suicidal. <laughs> That's my favorite band. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. I'm a Buddhist, so I got Buddha on my Are you hand. really? Yeah. Uh, and then I have um, Medusa, and I have my daughter's name tatted right next to it. I love that. Because of the story of Medusa. So Medusa used to turn guys into snakes because she got raped by some men and her mom cursed her so, and gave her a head, of, a head of snakes so that when guys look at her, they turn to stone. Holy it shit. It's a protective measure. So kind of means like I'll protect my daughter by any means necessary. Got my grandmama name right here. She died in 2015. She was born in 1938. You closer there? Uh, yeah, she pretty much raised me. Wow. And I got the onk with the all CNI. And this is a Japanese tattoo that I got when I was going through a lot. Uh, it says war in Japanese and peace, and that was the equal to balance. And I have a Japanese demon, which is a kami. And uh, I have a knife going through his face, and that, that's kind of like representative of when like I feel like I got a control of my anxiety and depression. And then I have like I have a tattoo right here in my head that says mind over matter. Damn, dude. Any of them hurt? The chest. Yeah. Uh, that one hurt. Wow, you are filled up. I'm not even done yet. <laughs> oh, no? More kids and more tats? Of course. Is that going to be a tattoo you get? Why do you want more kids? Because uh, it was just me and my brother. My sister died at the age of six months from pneumonia. No way. Yeah, so I have two girls. I want one more girl and two boys. Yeah, I feel like you need a boy. Yeah. I want two. Dave Jr.? D3, I'm a junior. Dude, I fucking love that. That sounds like an athlete, right? Yeah, it sounds amazing. Wait, D3 Lucas? No, it's, that's that's just going to be his nickname. Yeah. Because he's okay. going to be David Emmanuel Lucas. The yeah, third. yeah, for sure. So D3. That's amazing, dude. Uh, Dave, man, I mean, you know, it's no surprise that I, uh, you know, liked it from the get-go and asked you to uh, My dog. come do shows, man. And I, and I love that you... Reciprocated too, because also, shit, man, as we both know, and talking about just like working hard and being humble and having a good head on your shoulders, you could have also been like, you know, what's the pay? Where, how much time? This and that. You just said yes. Right. Because you were like, oh, cool work that I got from a small amount of time I did and just being around and being a good dude and right. being funny. And, uh, and that's the name of the game. I want to close this out with something I've been doing recently. Which is, uh, is James that? James Lipton uh, hosted Inside the Actor Studio. I don't know if you know what that show is. I've You're, seen it. You have yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You haven't seen Fraggle Rock, but you know Inside the Actor Studio. Yeah, where they used to be on stage in front of an audience. Yep, and he asking talk, questions. Yeah, yeah. Actors. Chappelle was on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, you inevitably at some point would be on it. But he's passed. Until they do a new rendition, I want to give you the Lipton ten question uh, 
final end of the show. Let's do it. Let's go through it. And I mean, here we go. As Lipton. Back here with David Lucas. David, what's your favorite word? Nigga. <laughs> 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 By the way, let me do what James Lipton would have done. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> David, what's your least favorite word? Broke. David, what turns you on? Uh, fat booty white women. <laughs> what turns you off? Uh, shows that pay less than $500. <laughs> <laughs> David, what's your favorite curse word? Fuck. Mm -hmm. What sound or noise do you love? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the sound that girls make when you first insert your penis. Into oh my God. <laughs> Great answer. Yeah. What's, uh, yeah. And by the way, that's, you know, way better than the alternative, which is, ugh. No, nah, I don't get that. Okay. What sound or noise do you hate? Blech. When girls gag. <laughs> Jesus Now your mom's definitely not watching this episode No What profession other than your own David would you like to attempt uh, If I wasn't a comedian I'd be a Probably a, a music Producer Oh yeah Yeah For what genre uh, R&B or country Give me your OG R&B uh, Artist Because that's I mean oh. OG R&B Probably Jodeci oh, Great answer dude See I probably OG country you, you know country music? I'm getting more into it. Blame it all on my roots. I showed up in boots. It's Garth, right? And ruined your black tie affair. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> the last one to know. The last one to show I was the last one you thought you'd see there. And I saw the surprise and the fear in his eyes <laughs> when I took his glass of champagne. Bam, 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 bam. But I toasted you, said, honey, we may be through, but you never hear me complain. Because I got friends in low places where the whiskey drowns and the beers chase my blues away. And, and I'll, I'll be okay. okay. <laughs> I'm not big on social graces. Right. Think I'll slip on down to the oasis. So I got friends <laughs> in low places. Dude, one of the uh, highest grossing artists of all time. Garth Brooks? Maybe, I think actually, maybe the. George, can you pull that up real quick? Uh, all right, so r and I'm probably going to have to go. The highest grossing country artist of all time. It's not a... Uh, I mean... A, what's the lead singer from Hootie and the Blowfish? Oh, Darius, Darius Rucker. Rucker. Oh, he's coming on the pod in two weeks. Really? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to have to zoom it, but... Can I just act like I'm doing security? thousand percent. All right. Um, Maybe Dixie Chicks is up there. Dude, Toby Keith be. should be... Garth is number one, yeah. George Strait, that makes sense. Carrie Underwood's got to be... Oh, Shania, come on. Get out of here. Kenny Rogers has always slept on. Alabama. All I right. got oceanfront property in Arizona. Is that a song or? That's George Strait. Oh, shit. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> how you, I know more country than you. I, dude, I Seattle. was. Seattle. It's Seattle. Yeah, I grew up in the grunge area, I'm dude. George. I also grew up in the Color Me Bad, you know. Ooh. Like yeah. fucking. Little I Swear, little fucking awful swear, one. Huh? Take off your coat, I'll make you feel at home. Oh, that's uh. Um, Let's pour a glass of wine, cause now we're all alone. I've been waiting for yeah, you, so just let me hold you close to me. Cause I've been dying for you, gotta make love to me. Ooh, My mom just play that. Girl, you know it feels real good. And they were all like white guys and light skin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can do it till we both wake, wake up. up. I got a dumb joke about that. I'm like, you guys been sleeping and fucking? I was like, is that even possible? Um, Hilarious. Yeah, Keith Sweat was one of my uh, original. I want your body. <laughs> you could blame him in the biopic. To the very last drive. <laughs> I want you to holler, baby. When you want me to stop. And who can love you like me? Nobody. <laughs> who can love you like me? Nobody. Who can... What is it? Do you all night, yeah, baby? Dude. 
Nobody, baby. And, and the, the band, band keeps playing on. Dude, just go on, <laughs> on and on, on. Now, what I would always love is if there was just a band in the corner while he's fucking, and there's a, but there's no band when you finally cut over. It's just a guy going, bow, wow, wow. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, all right. Uh, what profession would you not like to do, Dave? Teach kids. Yep. That's a fuck. That's an admirable uh, profession that doesn't get enough love for the good ones. If heaven exists, David, what would you like to hear God say you when you arrive at the... What would you like to hear God say to you when you arrive at the pearly gates? You can eat all this food with no high cholesterol or high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> all the brisket, all the pork taco, all the fried shit you want to eat, nigga, that's heaven to me. <laughs> Fuck all that streets of gold, nigga. Can I eat all this food and not have clogged arteries, God? That. You got some design flaw, nigga. You put all this shit on earth, and we got to worry about high cholesterol and clogged arteries. Design, nigga, we in assimilation. <laughs> You're not wrong. That's a great fucking answer. <laughs> David Lucas, uh... Follow follow Dave on all the social medias. If you're not yeah. a fan, which I'm sure you are already, uh, hit him up at David yeah. Lucas on Instagram and Twitter. David Lucas funny. David Lucas funny. That's right. I think funny David Lucas on Twitter. Okay, and uh, and Google you. You got a website for your tour dates? Nah. Okay. Post all that shit on the gram though, right? Big things coming your way, Dave. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, man. Keep doing your thing. All right, guys. Good night. Mmm, Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of uh, stuff to uh, to think about and chew on, huh? Because that's what life's all about, chewing on the good stuff. Nobody said that. Maybe Denzel did. Maybe Tom Hanks did. Maybe they said it together in Philadelphia. The point is, click subscribe right here on the ALN logo so you can get more episodes and stay up to date when new content drops, highlights, animations, clips. It's all here for you, baby. I'll see you next time. Well, I don't know how to blink.